one. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Faculty of Arts and Social Science Spotlights. I'm also, happy Friday to you and Carlton U Spirit Day. As you can see, I have my Carlton U uh, sweat, uh, sweat around here, my shirt. Uh, every day is Spirit Day on Fridays at Carlton. I'm Trevor Lewis, and I'm joined by a great group of professors and students today who are going to explore student life in the arts and social sciences faculty. The specialties we'll be spotlighting today are indeed very popular choices with applicants in cognitive science, philosophy and psychology. So thank you for joining us today and perhaps who knows even each Friday, uh, each Friday at 4 p.m. as we delve into new topics each and every week. The schedule and link will be posted here for uh, so feel free to check that out. Before we get going and um, I'd like to like to take a, a quick moment to highlight some other important activities such as our open house event where we'll feature the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences on Saturday the 7th of November. Check out that schedule and please do circle back to join us uh, once again on Saturday, November 7th for our open house. And hot off the presses is the launch of a guided virtual tour, which will commence Monday, uh, October 26th. So this is coming up and will be offered Monday to Sunday at 2 and 5 p.m., as well as Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Check out registration for those on Carlton 360, and we'll try to get you a link to, to that uh, hot off the press news um, that we're sharing here today. So for today's housekeeping, um, feel free to check out the live Q&A function here in the live event. As we have a whole host of recruitment and admission experts behind the curtain here, answering your questions and helping you pave your way to a successful academic career in the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. But before I begin, let me start by saying, Carleton University acknowledges the location of its campus on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. That being said, let's bring in our first speaker, Mark. Mark is an instructor in the Cognitive Science Program, and I'd like to welcome Mark and bring him on screen to say hello. And then uh, in due course, Mark will then bring in a student from the program. And once again, welcome Mark and take it away. Uh, hi Trevor, thanks very much for that introduction and thank you for having me here today. I'm very happy to be here on behalf of the uh, Department of Cognitive Science. We just changed our name recently. Uh, I'm the undergraduate supervisor for CogSci. I also teach some classes every year. And uh, yeah, we're, we're quite excited about our program. We are an interdisciplinary program, which means that students will come uh, to study the mind with us and they will look at it from a bunch of different perspectives. So students in our program can take philosophy courses, they can take psychology courses, uh, they take neuroscience and linguistics and computer programming courses. And uh, all of those courses tie together because they're all different ways of approaching and trying to understand how the mind works. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here today and uh, I'd like to uh, bring our student on, uh, Kirsten, uh, who will be answering some questions. Hi everybody. Hi Kirsten, uh, thanks for joining us today. I understand you, I know you're in fourth year and you're uh, working on your honors project right now, which is a really exciting thing. We might get a chance to talk about a bit later on. But I wanted to start with some more general questions first. And so my first one is, is just basically what made you choose Carleton University? And in particular, uh, what made you, uh, what attracted you to cognitive science? Yeah, so I chose Carleton. Um, I'd actually come to Carleton before for a gymnastics competition and I stayed in the residence here. And I really just like the campus. I really like the feel of it. It's definitely a campus university, which was something I was looking for. And um, the reason I chose the cognitive science program was I was really looking for something interdisciplinary. Um, coming into my undergraduate degree, I'd, I'd considered taking um, possibly philosophy or um, psychology or neuroscience. I'd kind of looked into all those things. And I, and I really think my dad must have just Googled, like my daughter likes all these things. Um, what's a good program for her? Because he's actually the one who found the cognitive science program for me. But um, once I found it, I knew it was going to be a really good fit for me because I got the opportunity to dip my toe into all those different areas, like you said, um, that I had interest in. And um, yeah, I just I was struggling to find something that I thought was enough for me. And I think cognitive science was great just because got to try out all those different areas and see where my uh, true interests lie. 
Yeah, no, that's great. And and as you know, uh, the neat thing about our program is you take courses in all those areas, but you also get to pick one of those five areas to sort of concentrate in. That becomes your specialization area, uh, which which is which is really good as well. Yeah. Um, during your degree here, in the four years you've been here, what's the proudest you've been about about something related to, to Cogsci or your or your your time here at Carleton? Um, I've had I've had a lot of proud moments throughout my degree. I think. One time when I felt really accomplished was uh, at the end of first year, just because it was uh, kind of intimidating coming into university. I'd, I'd taken a year off after high school and I had some doubts, you know, like, can I can I handle this? Am I ready to come back? And then at the end of first year when I'd um, I'd survived two exam periods and uh, yeah, made it through with um, relatively unscathed, I felt really proud of myself and I was just happy with like the choices I'd made with my choice to come to Carleton and happy with my academic achievements and felt really proud. But yeah, that was a big one. And I'm sure I will feel very proud when I'm done my undergraduate thesis, but I can't really think that far ahead right now because there's still so much work to be done for that. But when I, you know, when I finish that, it's um it's a topic I'm really interested in and enjoying working on. So I think once that's all done, I'll be I'll be pretty happy with that. For sure, yeah, and, and definitely the first year is always tremendously exciting, but it does have a lot of adjustments uh, that students have to make, and it's it's great that it went well, yeah. Um, lots of courses we take. We've been talking about all these different subject matters, and, and I should also mention that students in, in CogSci also take Cognitive Science courses, so those are courses that sort of tie in those other areas and try to bring everything together and look at the way that these different methodologies and questions for understanding the mind kind of kind of uh, 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 come together. Um, what, what's your favorite course been? Uh, in your time here and, and why? What was it about the course that you liked so much? Yeah, this is such a hard question because you take so many courses throughout your degree and there's so many that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, like specifically to cognitive science, I would say one of my favorite courses that I took was the first year seminar. Um, and this is a class that all cognitive science students um, are required to take. And the reason I really enjoyed it, just because it was um, a smaller class, so it was only about 45 people in this class. Um, and I got to know some students who were in my program and got to know the professor really well. And it was just a good kind of like first introduction to what cognitive science is. Um, and I found it just so exciting. I liked a lot of the topics that we covered. Um, so that was great, just getting to know people in the program, getting to know kind of what the the um, actual degree was going to look like and what I was going to be learning about and things and yeah that was a great course but um, I also liked a lot like I enjoyed a lot of my other required uh, courses for COGSI so another one that we all have to take is um, linguistics 1001 and I actually loved that course I found it really really interesting because it was um, covering topics that I'd never really learned about before and it kind of sounds silly to say now, but you you really understand like the complexities of language after you take it. Um, and if you're like me, like I love problem solving and like little puzzles and like things like that. And linguistics is so great because you get to do a lot of those things like you get to do a lot of um, little challenging uh, like data searching questions. And um, I just really liked it. It was completely different to anything I'd ever learned before. And then I'm I'm actually specializing in the in the neuroscience area of cognitive science. So the biological foundations of cognition is what we call it. But I got to take a lot of really great neuroscience classes as well. So I took um, neuropharmacology over the summer, which is a class all about different drugs and what they do to your brain and um, talking about addiction and substance use. And it was really, really interesting. That was also a great class. That's great. Yeah, no, I agree. There's there's an awful lot of courses out there, and it's nice that there's so many that had a, had a had a had a good effect on you. Uh, the first year seminars, in particular, are something that I know Carlton is really proud of, and I, I believe it's 30 students, so they're actually quite small, and mm -hmm. uh, they're they're in first year, so that's a great opportunity to take a course in first year that's a bit smaller than some of the other ones, which is which is always good as well. Yeah, uh, you mentioned your honors project, and maybe we can talk a bit more about that. But 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 the more general question I have is, what are some of the skills that you developed? Do you think as in, in taking a degree in cognitive science? I mean, you you learn a lot, I think, throughout your undergraduate degree, like more than you can really comprehend sometimes. But a big skill that I, I feel like I've learned this um, year and well, throughout the four years is 
the I've kind of developed the ability to ask for help um, a lot better than I might have had in high school. I'm quite proud person, but um, your undergraduate degree is really challenging and there's a lot of uh, a lot of adjustments, like you said, Mark, that we have to make. And I think learning to ask for help in terms of like uh, reaching out to people that are there to be a support system to you, like your professors and your um, teaching assistants and kind of just asking for help there and taking advantage of all of the uh, different student services that Carleton has available to us um, to make the process as easy as possible. Like those are there to make your life better. And I think um, that's something I really learned is like asking for help is, is a great way to make your whole life easier. And it wasn't something that was always very easy for me. So definitely got a lot better at that throughout the past four years and definitely, um, in addition, like worked on my time management and organization skills. I think that's a big part of success at university is just organizing your time um, correctly and uh, really trying to work on procrastination and and doing it doing it when you've uh, set out the time to get things done and staying organized and on top of things just makes it a lot less stressful. And I've learned that a little bit the hard way, I guess, but. Um, yeah, it's something you learn quite quick coming into university and a lot, lot better at that um, now than I definitely was in high school. Looking back, I'm like, oh, Lord, what was I doing? Yeah, no, for sure. And procrastination is an issue that we all uh, we all struggle with at times, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, OK, great. Um, oh, and a final couple of questions here. Where do you hope your degree takes you next and how are you preparing for that for that next step? Um, well, currently I'm applying to the Masters of Human Computer Interactions here at Carleton. So I feel I feel really well prepared after um, my three and a bit years, almost four years, I guess, um, going into that uh, into that program. I think um, the the classes that you take in cognitive science set you up really well for a, a postgraduate degree if that's what you want to do. Um, so hopefully that will all work out. That's where I'm, my next steps are and preparing for that has really just been um, asking for advice from like current students in the program as well as um, my uh, supervisors and uh, faculty that are there in cognitive science because um, they're all a lot of them are are really encouraging of going into graduate programs and they've all done it before so they're super helpful. So I'm mainly just preparing by like talking to others and then yeah just getting other people's advice and kind of chipping away at the iceberg of applications right now um so hopefully uh after if i get into that program which i'm hoping i will i'm thinking about a career in user experience so that's kind of the long-term plan at the moment okay great and you're and you're working on an honors thesis right now i think which is mm -hmm. one of the things that students can do to help them in the grad school right and then and in cognitive science every student has the opportunity if they want to uh to to work on an honors thesis where they get to work one-on-one -on -one with a professor to work on a project so i think that's great that you're doing that as well yeah mm -hmm. um okay well thank you very much that was a uh, great chatting with you today and i wish you all the best with the rest of this year and with your honors thesis and all um, and your applications and everything like that so thanks a lot kristen yeah, here. thanks so much, Mark, and thank you to all the prospective students who are attending this event. Definitely, like Trevor said, I recommend doing a campus tour. I'm also a campus tour guide, so you might see my face again if you decide to do that. But yeah, best of luck to everyone in their applications. Really enjoyed the uh, shameless plug for uh, Kirsten's <laughs> tours. <laughs> Kirsten's going for tips. Uh, thank you very much, Kirsten. It was uh, just amazing to, uh, to, to get your insight and, and hear your story. Thank you very much for Mark, Mark for enjoy, uh, joining us as well. Uh, we're going to pivot, uh, change gears to uh, another topic of, of interest, a uh, strong topic of interest with prospective students being philosophy. And we're going to uh, welcome Professor uh, Melissa Frankel to the uh, to the screen, and she's going to take a bit of time to, to talk about that and introduce her student as well. Take it away, Melissa. Hi everyone, thank you for, uh, for having me here. I'm really excited to be here to talk to prospective students, especially because a lot of students aren't exactly sure what philosophy is all about. So between me and Saleha, who will be joining me here, hopefully we can give you a little bit of sense of what you would do in a philosophy program and why Carleton has such an attractive philosophy program. So we think about philosophy in certain ways as being 
the core of the humanities, right? Philosophy is about thinking about humanity, human beings, and how we engage with the world around us, how we learn about it, how, how we interact with it, the social, the natural world. And at the core of all that is critical thinking. So critically engaging with the world and pursuing truth um, in all of its forms. And, uh, um, and so we have not so many majors, but we have a lot of students who take philosophy courses, whether as electives or as a minor in philosophy. And in particular, if you're thinking about taking a philosophy course, I would highly recommend one of our courses in critical thinking or in logic. Um, but we actually have courses in a number of different areas and at Carleton we have courses in political philosophy, in moral philosophy, we have experts in bioethics, um, we have a lot of philosophers who work on the mind so we're strongly actually connected with the Department of Cognitive Science that you just heard about um, and we have philosophers who work on the history of philosophy. We're not a very big department, there's about 11 of us, but we like to think that we're still mighty. We've got we cover lots of different subjects and we've got lots of really wonderful students who are very active, um, even in these days where we just have sort of Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Our students still find ways to interact with one another. So one of our students who I'm about to talk about uh, talk with, her name is Saleha. She's in her final semester. Uh, and I'll let her talk a little bit about what attracts her to philosophy because my understanding is that she transferred into philosophy during her degree, which is how we get a number of our students. Um, and so I'm really excited to hear her talk also about um, a research internship that she did for the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, which is a wonderful opportunity that FAST students have here at Carleton. So, uh, um, Saleha? And so you just have to unmute there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I would um, so to answer your question, the reason why I got attracted to philosophy was because um, I just found the world that we were living in a little um, uh, partisan. And I always thought, like, what if I was born in a place where um, um, I was a child of a Trump supporter, or I was in a place where um, the, the the thoughts that I have right now in terms of what is right and what is wrong, um, what if what I see as wrong right now is just because of the circumstances that I'm in? And I was like thinking about these questions a lot, and I thought um, I should probably read a little bit and figure out what um, other people have to say about it. And I remember picking up a book uh, by on Socrates, the Socrates, uh, I guess Plato wrote about Socrates, and it was the Apology, and I remember reading the whole book and thinking, wow, I didn't understand any of that, and so <laughs> I thought I should probably go and actually read about the people that are considered to be smart and actually study these things so that um, I I don't think that at the end of my life, I think that I regret that I didn't explore these questions further. And so that's why I went into philosophy. I wanted to search as um, cliched as it might sound. It was in my search for truth that I went into the department of philosophy. And I am very um, satisfied with what I found at the philosophy department at Carleton. <laughs> I don't find that cliche at all. I think that's just a really beautiful, actually, this sort of central tr uh, search for truth as part of the human condition. And so we're really glad to have you as a student. Do you, would you say a little bit more about Carleton specifically and what attracts you to Carleton? Um, I actually remember I applied. Um, I was living in Alberta and I was going to move to Ottawa because of my husband's work. And I remember applying to U Ottawa and I remember applying to Carleton and I couldn't decide. And so I actually uh, went, uh, came to the campus. Uh, I took an Uber from the hotel I was living at and I, um, I just came to Carleton and I fell in love with the campus. I remember seeing the canal and the water and the buildings and the quad. And I just, I really liked the feeling and it felt very intimate. And so I thought, I think this is the place for me. And I just, took the plunge and I'm very happy with that. <laughs> yeah, you can't see me on this screen right now, but I'm nodding along. I, I also, I, it's such a beautiful campus and, and you, it, there's, a, there's a real feeling of community that's created here. Um, can you say something about maybe what, what's made you proudest during your degree? Um, I remember um, 
I came across an ad for the FASS internship, the research internship that gives um, undergraduate students an opportunity to conduct research. And I remember I saw it on Friday and the deadline was on Monday. And in that moment, I thought, OK, I'm going to miss this. But then I was actually in the philosophy department. And if you ever get a chance to go to the building, when you're coming down from the building, you actually come across the dean's office. Um, and so I just walked into the dean's office and I asked them for an extension and they gave it to me. And I was very, very proud that I did that because a lot of university is about just asking the right questions and about going um, about actually just putting yourself out there because if I wouldn't have had that idea of just going in there and asking for an extension, I don't think I would have gotten it. Um, so I went in there and I told them that I just saw this opportunity and I'm really interested in it. I'm really interested in research and um, they said, sure, have another week and I took it and I applied and I got it and that I, I was actually more proud of going in and asking for an extension than actually winning the, the internship. <laughs> and that's I think a lot of undergraduate is about that just if if you find yourself in a bit of a pickle, um, just go and there are so many um, good resources and there are so many um, understanding uh, people that will give you the opportunity that you're looking for. You just have to go out and ask. <laughs> yeah, that ties in so nicely to what Kirsten was saying before about, you know, reaching out to people during your degree and asking for help and and um, we're all here because we because we really do want to support you and help you out. But by the way, you should be extremely proud of yourself also for earning that fast uh, research fellowship, research internship, because that's you did wonderful work there. Um, so uh, um, but if you want, maybe can you tell us also about your favorite course? But I'd like to hear also about the research you did for the, the research internship, if you would like to tell us. But if you prefer to just talk about the, your favorite sure. course, then. Um, I remember um, uh, I, I researched about um, the role that humor plays in satire in the context of how late night shows like Trevor Noah and um, uh, Jon Stewart um, in, in the, how they make fun of Donald Trump and about how the rhetoric is very similar to the rhetoric that Donald Trump actually uses in making fun of other people. Like it's very same rhetorical devices if you look at them closely. Um, I used a little bit of Hegel in um, uh, uh, talking about how humor can be subjective. So if you are trying to talk about a certain idea and if you insert humor into it, then the attention can sometimes be diverted from the actual idea and people can start talking about the humorous part about how it can be offensive or non-offensive. And you can just start going into a debate about how, um, well, they shouldn't have said it like this, they shouldn't have said it like that. And then it just kind of retracts away from the actual issue. Um, like one of the examples I found was um, Stephen Colbert. He talked about, um, uh, there are these um, uh, uh, um, uh, the Washington Redskins, which is a football um, uh, uh, team in the United States. And he tweeted something very, very vulgar and uh, funny about uh, it. Um, and uh, he was basically tweeting about the fact that, you know, I'm going to start this company that is a charity. And he used some defamatory um, yeah, he used some offensive uh, 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 terms to represent some uh, uh, communities, racial communities, racialized communities, that I'm going to start a charity that's called this and it's going to help um, those people. And um, there's actually a lot of context behind this, but I'm a little worried that I'm going to go off on a really long tangent about my research. <laughs> um, so, um, the Washington Redskins, the owner of the Washington Redskins, actually uh, started a um, charity for Native Americans. Um, and so Stephen Colbert was critiquing the charity that he started for them. And uh, he said, I'm going to start a something charity. Uh, and um, uh, the, the response to his critique was that, you know, you shouldn't have said that racialized word, you shouldn't have talked about it. 
And basically, in history, we basically remember that Stephen Colbert made a bad joke. We don't really remember that uh, there is this uh, problem of racism within our communities that is exploited by companies like the Washington Redskins. Um, but that's that is just such a fascinating and timely topic. And I, I know I put you on the spot a little bit by asking you that, but I really appreciated that answer. I so thank you. I've this for hours. <laughs> Um, is there a course in particular that you really enjoyed at Carleton? Um, one of the courses I really enjoyed was one of the courses I took with you, uh, Philosophy with Children. Um, it was because, um, well, um, a lot of philosophy can be very much uh, very abstract and a lot of the readings for it can be very dense. And so it's very important to keep like the real world in mind. Uh, that's why I, I picked the topic for my research and that's why I was um, I really enjoyed one of your courses because with philosophy with children you can take a lot of theory and you can apply it to real life. Uh, a lot of times you can really get lost in philosophy, but you can sometimes forget that a lot of these dense, interesting ideas are very, very applicable even today. A lot of Socrates, which was he was writing um, Plato, he was writing so long ago, um, is still very, very applicable today. And we just have to be plugged into the world and we just need to pay attention to um, the the uh, the ideas behind the philosophy in order to apply it in our world. And that's really what made me interested in philosophy with children because we took theoretical ideas and we tried to apply them and see if children can pick up a philosophical idea. Uh, we actually went in a, a uh, uh, an elementary school we actually went into a classroom and I remember uh, reading a children's book to them and a lot of what um, uh, the responses for children were when properly probed were very Kantian and I remember being very fascinated by the idea that if put in simple enough terms everyone can do philosophy and you just have to properly understand it and apply it. Yeah, actually, if, if if I can talk a little bit more about your work for that seminar, right? you went into this classroom, you read The Emperor Has No Clothes, and you really generated a fascinating discussion about the morality of lying and deception and the nature of authority and trust. And it was just a really beautiful moment of investigating you know, the kinds of questions that you were talking about earlier that brought you to philosophy to begin with. So I was so glad to have you in that class too. Um, what are some of the skills that you've developed in a philosophy degree? Um, I think I learned to read. <laughs> uh, like properly uh, read. Um, a lot of times when I would read a book, I would read it and I would think whatever I would, whatever presuppositions I would come to the book with, that's what I would leave um, with it. So I liked reading a lot of um, uh, um, uh, a simple um, um, literature, uh, boy meets girl, they get married, they live happily ever after at the end. Um, and when I would ever try to read something more complex, it would go over my head, so I would just avoid it. But I think this degree has helped me critically read uh, better, and I'm very happy for that. Yeah, reading is hard, right? I mean, <laughs> reading is hard. Seems like it's easy. Seems like you learn how to do it back in grade, you know, in grade one in kindergarten. But reading is really hard. So I, I, that's a skill that I'm always developing as well. <laughs> what, where do you hope your degree will take you? And can you say a bit about how you're preparing for your next steps? Um, when I initially came into this degree, I just thought, you know, these are the goals I have, and I want to be able to read this book, this book, and this book, and I'll be done with it. But kind of left a little unsatisfied I want I want to pursue it more <laughs> I did not think that I would see myself going into grad school but um, that's where I'm hoping to go because when I did research I really enjoyed it and I would like to do more of it there's just so many more topics that I would like to go explore um, and so I'm hoping to apply to grad school and I'm hoping to get in and then I might go for a post postgrad and who knows Hopefully I'll go into a place where I can do a lot of research. That's that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that and, and I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Melissa and certainly Slaya. That's a, 
Uh, it was really great hearing about your fascinating research, and I'm so glad that you chose our university from all the way over there in Alberta. So thanks again for joining us today. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to take a moment to introduce uh, Professor Matt Sorley, uh, who's a professor in the psychology uh, department, an immensely uh, popular program for us uh, prospective students. And I'll pass it over to, to Matt now, who can have a chat with a psychology student. Matt? Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Ed, Trevor. And you, you hinted at, at psychology's popularity, and it, it, it certainly is the largest major in the Faculty of Arts and, and Social Sciences. And I think so much of that has to do with the fact that psychology, it's, it's the scientific study of our thoughts and our feelings and, and, and behaviors. And these are topics that, that resonate with us in a variety of different ways. They can be applied to, to our relationships, to our work life, to, to so much that occurs through us. Uh, for us throughout the throughout the lifespan and really contributes so much to 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 what it means to be to be human right and this is this is important stuff so i i, I teach a, a variety of different courses for the for the department so i teach uh, intro uh, to psychology so it's possible that uh, some of you may be in my class i also teach a, a first year seminar called the psychology of uh, of success and i teach sports psychology and a variety of uh, other classes. But again, what binds all of those classes together and all the classes and, and activities in our research labs is this concern about our thoughts and feelings and behaviors. And certainly no one knows more about uh, the focus of psychology than uh, our, our student today, Natalie, who very much has made the most of her program. So I'll, Natalie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, um, so I'm Natalie and I'm currently in the developmental psych program here at Carleton. Great, so developmental psychology is, is one of the key research areas in our department along with cognitive psychology and forensic and, and organizational and we also have personality and, and social and, de and uh, developmental as well. So, so Natalie, what made you choose Carleton in the first place? I mean, you had so many options open to you. What was it about Carleton? Yeah, so I think I chose Carleton just because I saw that it had a lot of opportunities that not all the schools that I was looking at had to offer. I was pretty shocked when I found out that Carleton was the only school that I actually applied to with a co-op opportunity, which is very important to me. Um, and then, of course, um, there are many other in Ontario that have this opportunity, but since I'm from Ottawa, I didn't want to venture too far away from home. And a lot of my friends and family were already in the psychology program or neuroscience and mental health. And they told me all about how the profs in this program are so amazing. And throughout the years, I've gotten the chance to see that that's absolutely correct. Um, the profs in the social sciences faculty are really spectacular. They really step up to the plate, especially during the pandemic, and they truly cared about our mental health. Um, I've been doing a lot of pondering here at the end of my degree, and I've realized I have absolutely no regrets in coming here, and I've had an amazing time. You, you really highlighted a number of, of important pieces there. First, you mentioned mentioned co-op. Could you talk a little bit about, about your placement and, and where were you in terms of your co-op placement? So funny enough, I didn't actually end up getting the grades for the co-op opportunity, which is a lot more common than I think students really realize. So I am kind of looking at opportunities elsewhere outside in the real world where I can gain that experience. And I think it's important for students to know that co-op if you don't get in it's not the end of the world and you're still going to get the most out of your degree doing your like your thesis or your honors project and yeah and i'm glad you mentioned that because there are so many ways for students to gain experience and in our department we believe that you learn by doing and co-op mm -hmm. is just one of those ways we have so many other ways including a, a third year practicum course where you'll be volunteering in the community and earning course credit along the way. We also have a, a, so many courses that emphasize experiential learning and the opportunity once again to to learn by uh, by doing and engage with the with the community and, and reflect on material in the, in so many different uh, different important ways. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So you've had a lot of experiences across your degree program. You've had highs, you've had lows. Tell us about about your proudest moment. Uh, very similar to Kirsten, I think one of my proudest moments was after I finished my first year. So heading into second year, I had a pretty high GPA and that wasn't something I really thought I could achieve, especially considering how people discuss all the time about how the transition from high school to university is so difficult and how your grades are going to drop. So I really took that and used it as motivation to really 
push myself forward in my degree and that's how I ended up here as a ambassador for my program which I think is very exciting and I get to be a part of special things like this. Nice, great. That's that's wonderful. Now you've also had an opportunity to take so many different courses, and there are going to be some of those courses that that just hit certain notes for you, right? You, you really really enjoyed them more than others. What was your favorite course along the way? Hmm. My favorite course actually had nothing to do with psychology, but kind of intertwines with a lot of things. So Critical Introduction to Sexuality Studies is a second year course with Dan Irving and explores how heteronormativity is the center of a lot of our biases in the world. So for those who are listening who might not know, heteronormativity is basically the term for how heterosexuality is viewed to be the normal and preferred way of living. Um, and it discusses in great detail about how it's connected to things such as capitalism, colonialism, sexism, and all that jazz. Um, and I think it helped me be more critical and have different perspectives in my other courses, which I then can make that connection and think about how we in a Western society truly are very privileged. And then I took all of that knowledge specifically and applied it to my favorite psych course, which was Adolescence and Emerging Adulthood. Um, it's really cool to take courses that kind of relate to you because you can look at the textbook and the PowerPoints and be like, hey, like I recognize that within myself. Like it's really cool that I get to see my own self in what I'm learning. Um, and you get to really see how relationships, identity, and worldviews are really formed through our experiences. And this is a common theme throughout your psychology major. All right, so that, that's wonderful. Now, you, you've been returning back to developmental psychology a, a few times. What is it about developmental psych that really attracted your attention? I honestly have always just really been interested in how our brain actually develops, like from childhood into adulthood, because there's so many different like stages that we go through in life and it's as like an outsider looking in you can kind of see like kind of what's on the surface how we develop but then in the developmental psych program you really get to dive deep and look into the different functions of the brain and how we interact with each other and it's just a lot more profound than you might think it would be. Great, sure, well, that's great. So along the way, uh, you've been acquiring and refining all kinds of different skills. And some of these have been based on, you know, the courses that you're taking, the experiences that you've had on campus, the experiences you're having off campus. So uh, what are some of the skills that you've been developing uh, in your years at Carleton? Uh, specifically throughout my psych degree, I've learned how to be a more conscious human being and also be more critical of difficult situations and be more involved with the issues that are happening around us. So I found within the program, it allowed me to explore in a lot of different domains, which you talked about earlier. Um, I've had the opportunity to take classes such as sexuality studies, indigenous studies, human rights, and even American Sign Language. And you don't really realize how many of these subjects are actually intertwined and it forces you to kind of think more critically about how you're interacting with others and how you may have an effect on them. And then generally, I also learned that psychology is a lot more intense than I thought it would be coming out of uh, high school. You're basically becoming a doctor of the brain. So I learned the hard way that it's really beneficial to interact with your profs and go to their office hours because at the end of the day, we know that you guys are there and you're on our team and you really want us to succeed. Well, that's good of you to, to, to say it. I, I certainly think that that uh, at Carleton, we we think of it as, as a community, really. I mean, it, it has a bit of a small town feel to it, which uh, that's one of the reasons why I've, I've stayed, you know, if I was an undergrad student, a grad student at Carleton and ultimately made it my, my my work home as well, in part because of that feeling of community. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, no, that's good. So at this point in your, your program, you're really starting to think about next steps, right? So what what's coming next for you? Where's your degree gonna take you? And what are you what are you up to now in terms of trying to get ready to to make those transitions to the to the world of work? Honestly, I've really thought long and hard about this question and I don't have any solid plans like I know where I want to go and I know where I want to end up. But I've learned this year that with everything that's happening around us that you really don't know where life is going to take you. Uh, so in general, I'd really like to go for a graduate program in child psychology. And it's also very important to me that I go out and see the world. So I'm thinking that I'm probably going to start somewhere fresh and then take my master's and maybe a PhD. Um, I know that I really want to help children in their mental health and maybe look at advocacy in underrepresented communities. Um, I've worked with a lot of children over the years and I know I have a solid passion for them. So 
I think that's where I'm going to end up. Um, and I think it's really also really important for people to know that it's OK to not know what you want to do and take a break from academia because burnout is so real and you really want to keep your passion. So that's the mindset that I'm keeping. And I just know that I'm going to achieve my goals and that everybody who's watching is going to achieve theirs as well. You make so many good points there. I, I love the, the the idea that you don't have to have everything figured out on day one, right? I, I, I think yeah. We so often think that everyone else has it figured out, uh, but they but chances are they don't. And and so much of our of our of our journey involves key conversations and courses and experiences and all of these sorts of things that that help us to determine where we fit. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to, to visit with us uh, today. You're certainly you've been making the most of your your university experience. Thanks for chatting with me. It was great. Well, thank you very much, uh, Matthew and Natalie, for for your insight. That was an amazing conversation. We enjoyed uh, uh, listening in. Um, that was that's puts to the end to our spotlight session for today. I think that was a, a fantastic spotlight session today with so much interesting insight into these amazing specialties in what Matt called our community, our small community at Carleton. He's absolutely correct there. Many thanks to our special guest professors for joining us and especially our amazing star Carleton students who shared their time on the eve of their fall reading weeks. So I hope they have a, a good productive and restful break. And thanks again for joining us. And mostly thank you to all those students watching at home. Please feel free to hang around here a while to take a full advantage of the Q&A. As I mentioned at the outset, there's a whole host of people in the background are happy to answer all of your live questions. So we'll leave it open for another 10 minutes to, to answer every one of those great questions. Well, thanks again, everyone, and have a great weekend. <laughs>